our learning curve is developing and growing steeper and steeper and steeper by the day. I hope you are all well. Once again, my name is Mr. El Chitumba. I am here to give one of the most exciting presentations that he had a liver pathology. What is cystic echinococcosis? By definition, echinococcosis in humans is a zoonotic infection caused by larval stage of cystoid species of the echinococcus genus. In cystic echinococcosis, CE, caused by Echinococcus granulosus, the liver is the first and the more frequent involved organ, followed by the lung. Liver hydrocyte. Now, in brief, I'm going to show you how a hydrant cyst or a cystic Echinococcus present like on in general, then I will show you how it presents sonographically. So you can see here, this is our, our, our liver. Then you can see here, there is this lesion. This is a typical example of a cystic echinococcosis or identity cyst. So I'm going to delve more on this type of a cyst and then you can see how it appears sonographically so here is our stomach then the esophagus in the duodenum so you can see the the colon which is here the transverse colon if you can see it here so this is our anatomically this is what our gallbladder identity cysts have got variable sonographic appearances i am going to highlight some of the sonographic features that you are supposed to look at when you are seeing a cyst in the liver that can maybe alert you to say this could be a high dandy cyst. A high dandy cyst appears as a water attenuating cyst with a well defined wall. Daughter cysts appear as round peripherally placed cystic lesions in the mother cyst. Floating membranes appear thin and hypodense. The high density fluid surrounding the daughter cyst appear as radiating spokes like a rosette pitting. Classification of cystic echinococcosis. So there are variable classifications of cystic echinococcosis. The major or the broader classifications are the ones listed here. We have got CL, which is unilocular anechoic cystic lesion with no internal echoes or septations. We also have good CE1, which is called the active stage, with a uniform anechoic cyst with a fine internal echoes may only be visible after patient repositioning. You can also find internal echoes represented with high dental scent, which is fluid in the prostoscolysis originating from a ruptured vesicle. You also have CE2. Again, it is part of the active stage. In this classification or category, you see cysts with internal septation. Septa represent walls of daughter cyst. You can also have described multivisicular rosette or honeycomb appearances. Let's go on to CE3, which is called the transitional stage. The involving appearance of daughter cyst within the encompassing parent cyst. In this category, it is further categorized again as 3A and 3B. In the 3A category, you see a daughter cyst with detailed laminated membrane, which is called the water lily sign. And then the 3B, we do have with the daughter cyst within a solid matrix. Category CE4, which is called the inactive or the degenerative stage. You see absence of daughter cyst mixed with hypoechoic and hyperechoic matrix resembling a bow of wool, which is called bow of wool sign. Then, finally, we have good classification CE5, 
with the inactive or the degenerative stage as well. In this category, you see, act like thick, partially or completely calcified walls. Examples of height and distance. Here is just a pictorial demonstration of the different classifications as I have already alluded to. So starting from this, in active stages, you can see these are the type of cysts, these are sonographic appearances that you can actually see. So they are very variable. So this is the most interesting or uh, under the transitional stage, which is called the water lily sign. You can see the daughter cyst here is actually detached from the main cyst. So this is the most interesting. Then you can have this one with the hand comb like appearance or the fishnet type of appearance, which is part of the active stage of our cystic echinococcus. Then you can have a cystic lesion with, which is with, with no internal uh, echoes as you can see here and then this can be confusing with any other type of cyst that we can talk of. So these are the classifications. So at this type you can see that the cyst is actually more like it's shrinking. What could this be? Here is a typical example of a high dentist cyst. I scanned this patient at our department, radiology department, and the man was 70 years old and he came to the department presenting with a swollen abdomen and he was unable to pass urine for four days. So sonographically, what we found in ultrasound scan was the following amazing uh, capture. You can see here is our liver. And then you can see this fishnet type of appearance. This one, which is ballooning like this. Then you can see these septations, the septations, the septations, which is like a fishnet. So this cyst with septations is actually found within the right lobe of the of the liver. As you can see, it is it extends all the way. It extends all the way. It extends all the way. So if we were for, if you were following from the previous demonstration that we made, you can actually see that it corresponds to CE2 classification here, and our echinococcus cyst was in the active stage. So it's resembling this fishnet appearance here, the honeycomb appearance. So. As you've seen from the previous video, you can see that our cyst had got these septations, septations, you can see the septations, the septations, and they are affecting um, cunoid segment 7 and 8 around this region here. Let me play it again, so you can actually see our cyst. The hepatic cyst on power Doppler. Okay. As you are aware that any lesion that you find, you must actually interrogate it on power Doppler to make sure if there is intralesional perfusion or no or none. So in this case, on power Doppler interrogation, you can see that we are not we are there's no color filling in the in the lesion in the cyst. There's no color filling, so it's not taking up color, as you can see. The lesion is not taking up color, so there's no intra lesional perfusion. Amazing So, why did we call this an amazing cystic echinococcus? As you can see from this demonstration, this is now the peritoneal space in the right upper quadrant. You can see the same septations, they are still there, and there is ascites that is occupying the peritoneal space. And the ascites has got the same septations that we found on the cystic echinococcus. This is a typical case of what we call dissemination of the infection. So it's spreading beyond the, the liver and it's going all the way to affect the peritoneal space. The different years. As you know, sonographically, we don't just dwell on what we think might be the finding according to our own observations. We are also supposed to give differentials. 
otherwise there could be surprises after when other modalities are involved to make the final diagnosis. So what might resemble this fishnet uh, like appearing structure? This could be fibrin strands of intraperitoneal bleeding. So this could be fibrin strands of intraperitoneal bleeding. Again, in villages, when you find something of this nature, this could actually mimic what we call what, what, what we call a mucinous cyst adenoma. So cyst, mucinous cyst adenomas can also have this honeycomb-like or fishnet-like appearance. This can also be found when we do have what are called peritoneal cysts. So they can also resemble this fishnet appearance. So this is amazing. You can see the wonders, the beauty here that we have. You can see actually the, the spider web like appearance that you can see. You can see the spider web. Then what is appearing is somewhere here. Uh, is, uh, these are the bowels. You can see you can see the bowels that are protruding somewhere there. So as I had said already, in all quadrants, we observed this fishnet appearing structure. You can see this. So this is the this is the left lower quadrant, and you can actually see here there is a flow here, which are the iliac vessels which are here, and then you can see our bowel which is here. Then you can actually see the peritoneum is actually dredged with these ascites with all these septations or the fishnet appearance that I am talking about. Extensive peritoneal ascites. So, as I said, all the quadrants in the peritoneal space, they all had the same fishnet appearing ascites or septations as you can see. So this is very much extensive or it is very much disseminated to all the peritoneal space. Disseminated septations like that. Morrison pouch Okay, so in the Morrison's pouch, as you can also see here is the left lobe of the liver, then you can see this unequal space and then you see the flaps of septated uh, septations here which is part of the disseminated uh, peri-ascites as I said before. Separated ascites in the peri-blood. Okay, so on ultrasound examination of the of the suprapubic region or the suprapubic space also you can see that was a, a urinary bladder and then again you can see the same uh, uh, septated ascites stretching all the way around the urinary bladder let me play the video you can actually see here you can actually see again the fishnet appearance that is going in around the urinary bladder so in a nutshell this is it this is our case that we observed at our department it's one of those rare cases normally the hepatic identities that we see they are more localized the liver but here you can see that they are extensive to the rest of the peritoneum space so in as much as we could have came up with cystic echinococcus as our diagnosis we are yet to find what other clinical tests are going to find so this patient is still under investigation to ascertain if it was truly cystic echinococcus or it could have been something else thank you all thank you for watching the video remember to subscribe or follow us for future videos our videos are free we encourage everyone to learn thank you so much